that tells us something very clear about Jesus. Uh, Jesus is de declared in Scripture to be, and we're going to look at these. Let's see here. Let's start. Uh, let's start right here, okay, with Josh, and we're going to start with First John three five, and then we'll go that way. Cookie John eight forty six, David Acts three fourteen. We'll go with those three. Let's go ahead and, and listen to those. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Okay, well that's pretty specific, isn't it? In him is no sin. And then John eight forty six. If I say the truth, why do ye, ye not believe me? Okay, what he's saying there is he's saying, oh, 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 can any of you say that I'm a sinner? He was challenging them, and they couldn't. Okay, so uh, then Acts 3.14. Okay, it's, uh, there, the question is about, uh, and I, I believe this is in Peter's sermon, isn't it? In Acts 3. That's Peter's sermon. And he basically is saying, you denied this holy one, this just one, and you rather have had the murderer Barabbas. That's what it was. He was taking him to task on that. He said, and here you had this one, and he was holy, he was just, and you killed him. So Jesus is declared, uh, declared in, Jesus is declared in Scripture to be sinless. Sinless. Jesus is declared in Scripture to be sinless. Now, what I've got here, this is a neat way to, to, to look at it. If you want to find the worst about somebody, go and ask their enemy. Okay? Their enemy, if you got somebody that, let's say if I know somebody really, really doesn't like Peggy. Oh, my. And I wanted the dirt on Peggy. I'd go ask the person who I knew didn't like her. No, I don't know who that is, okay? I think everybody loves Peggy, okay? And I think she's pretty close to sinless, okay? Not, not quite there, but she's pretty close. All right, uh, so <laughs> Dennis is going, <laughs> Okay, Okay, so here, even those who were his enemies, that's what we're going to look at here. We're going to look at his enemies to see what they had to say of Jesus. Okay, so uh, we'll go next to Jeremiah with Mark chapter 1, verses 23 and 24. And then we'll go to Joe with Matthew 27, 3 and 4. And then Kevin, we're going to go to John 18, 38. And then we're going to go Penny with Matthew 27, 19. And then uh, uh, Pam, Luke 23, 41. And then Sam, Luke 23, 47. If I stutter like that, I am the worst. If you put a gun to my head and asked me my name, you'd probably have to shoot me. Because I, get, I have a hard time. I look right at Bud, and if somebody said, what's his name, what's his name, what's his name, I'd go, oh. Okay, anyway. So if you're wondering why I do that, that's just, I don't know why I do that, but that is natural. Okay. What's his name? I don't know if he's chipper or glooky or <laughs> goopy or dopey or what he is. I don't know who he is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Mark chapter 1, verses 23 and 24. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? 
I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Okay, so here you have the unclean spirit or unclean spirits declare him to be holy. Okay, now remember, if there's anybody that's got an axe to grind with Jesus, it's going to be an unclean spirit, and they say that he's holy. Okay, uh, Matthew 27. I wonder why that is. Isn't that something? They, when they got around Jesus, they couldn't, even, they couldn't lie. Because he's God. So there's a, there's a fear. There is absolutely a fear of God by the demon world and uh, to the point where they, they, they couldn't even try to manipulate. Okay, Matthew 27, 3 and 4. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the third piece of silver to the chief and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, don't give that to us. Out of that. Okay, betrayed what? Innocent blood. The innocent blood. So we have Judas Iscariot declaring the holiness of Jesus. Well, that whole thing is an interesting study, that whole interaction, the interactions between Jesus and Judas are absolutely amazing. Even the, uh, the Last Supper um, portrayed in the picture of the last of, of the Last Supper, and I believe it's scriptural. Judas was right next to Jesus. Judas wasn't down at the end of the table cowering. He was right next to Jesus, and uh, yeah, and um, so uh, just it's an interesting uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Even that whole transaction in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he's going to go and give him a kiss and and he calls Jesus master and then uh, uh, blows my mind Jesus calls him friend you know if you were going to take a person that I believe I believe Judas was absolutely indwelt by Satan okay he was called the son of perdition the only other person called the son of perdition in scripture is the I believe it's the antichrist or is it the beast I think it's the antichrist yes ma'am Well, apparently, apparently they needed they needed to they needed to have what's the term? Um, yes. What is? Yeah, yeah. A a witness. And if you read about the law there, when it talks about you know you have to have credible credible uh, credible witnesses, and so here he is one of their one of the twelve. That probably was something that they used to help build their case. Mm -hmm. You know one thing that really puzzled. You know one thing that really puzzled me about. They sound like Judas. He repented. He did. They sound like he repented. It seemed like he should be in heaven. No, he. What he don't. It doesn't just declare that he trusted Christ. What it says is, when it says he repented, he cha repented means he changed his mind, and he was so overwhelmed by it that he went out and killed himself. You know, what were you gonna say, Josh? I would say that if it was a group of soldiers, they didn't have to barely maybe witness a miracle that was actually being closed up for them. So they just needed somebody to point them out. Maybe they didn't. None of the soldiers there could have known or seen them at the point. They just had a job to go get a guy that has been causing trouble. Yeah, I think it's interesting that and that goes along with Philippians chapter 2 where it, he says when he was found in fashion as a man, okay, the, when we studied that in, in Philippians, that uh, fa and fashion as a man means he not only had the man 
looked, looked like a man, looked like an average man, he conformed to even what everybody else was wearing, that's what he wore. Uh, that's, you know, and there's things about, you know, did Jesus have hair down to his shoulders? I don't think he did, because all they had to say is look for the guy with hair down to his shoulders. That was not common then. He looked like, he looked like the rest of the disciples. So I think that's part of it, too. And here you are, you're at night. Uh, you want to make sure, you don't want to drag, can you imagine if the Roman soldiers would have dragged in the wrong guy? <laughs> Who do you got there? Yeah, I got, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I got Nathaniel or something here. I got the wrong one. Bartholomew. Whoops. Okay. Uh, but anyway, Judas Iscariot declared him to be innocent. Okay. So here we have the, the probably the arch enemy. If we were going to put a face on uh, the arch enemy of a person here uh, of Jesus, it would be Judas Iscariot. Okay. John 18:38. I find in him no fault at all. See the emphasis on that wasn't. I, I see him being not guilty. He's he's not guilty of the charge that you're bringing against him. He went as far as to say, I find in him no fault at all. Okay, so we have Pilate, and then Matthew twenty-seven nineteen. Okay, Pilate's wife called him, what kind of a man? A just man. Okay, we're going to keep going. Luke 23, 41. Okay, this is the dying thief. Wasn't really an enemy. Because I believe that that's the one who Jesus said yeah, he was the first. He was the he was the last one into paradise and probably the first one out. That's what I think. Okay, he probably the last one in and the first one out. He went in with Jesus and he probably walked right out with Jesus. And um, so uh, the dying thief declared Jesus uh, to be to be holy. And then Luke twenty three forty seven. Okay, this, the Roman centurion. Here, here's a thought now. So we've got evil spirit, unclean spirits, Judas Iscariot, Pontius Pilate, Pilate's wife, dying thief, and a Roman centurion, all declaring that Jesus was just, that he was holy, that he uh, was sinless, that his blood was pure. Uh, I wonder... Why? How, how is this that we have several of these people, you know, the thief, I believe the thief, of course, the Bible tells us that Jesus told, declared that he was going to go to paradise with him. Uh, I wonder if the Roman centurion trusted Christ as a Savior, uh, or Pilate's wife, or Pilate. Uh, we certainly know that the evil spirits are are they, they have no they have no option. The option was played a long time ago, and Judas Iscariot uh, had, if anything, Judas Iscariot had a knowledge of the purity of Christ, but never applied it. Um, I wonder if these folks. Uh, here, what are some takeaways from that? Here, just I'll show you what I mean. Don't take for granted that 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 guy or that lady sitting on a bar stool tonight isn't under conviction. Just, just don't take that for granted. That family member that always acts so angry toward you, um, walk carefully because very likely they're under conviction. I, I had to come to that conclusion a long time ago with my, my sister, and I, uh, she sometimes watches these, so she may hear me talk about her. Um, but um, I had several people tell me this week they saw me on television. 
What they mean is that, yeah, it's funny. But on the TV, I watch it on the TV. Uh, but, uh, you know, for, for years I just thought, no, my sister doesn't want anything to do with God. She doesn't want anything to do with church. She's not. And we'd have a big day at church, and I'd never invite her. We'd have a special event. I'd never invite her. I look back at it now, you think, I think I was hurting her by not asking her. Even if she would have snapped at me, even if she would have yelled at me or whatever, I'm not sure if she would that she would have. But uh, don't don't ever think that anybody's too far gone. You know, I uh, we better be careful how we act. Um, I've had people when I was out witnessing just be almost violent and frightening and then later on privately seek me out you know um, we better be careful how we respond to people's anger because what they might be doing is just testing whether you're whether what you've got is real or not and they're under conviction you know um, I I mean last, last Thursday I remember we were, we were praying about this and last Thursday I, I sat down wouldn't you know I sat right down right next to the transgender dude right there <laughs> ponytail oh. whole deal and I mean he got up and he was just railing and angry and um, wouldn't you know I sat right next to him and and what I, I tell you what I did and just please this is not I, I'm trying to learn this let me put it that way I'm trying to learn this because I'm not I don't always do this I put my hand out and I said my name's Jeff what's yours his name's Jacob and then the lady sat next to him introduced herself I shook her hand and I tried to think of something positive to say because they they were they looked as out there as not, not quite as out there as the guy with the bright red mohawk but but pretty close and uh and but and then a few minutes later i told him my, my name's pastor dufour and then all of a sudden the, the the kindness went away and uh matter of fact he's kind of rude very rude uh, and but you know i wasn't i wasn't rude and uh, i think that there's a lot of confused people out there that are hurting so desperately that they're daring you to be Christ-like. They're daring you to do it. And it's a whole lot easier to get on the bandwagon and, you know, thump your chest like Tarzan and yell and call everybody names and, and condemn everyone. You know, this book condemns people. I don't condemn people. That book condemns people. I, I, I'm going to stand with the book. But you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to take this book and start using it as a weapon to beat people over the head with. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit do His work. Um, and I didn't compromise one bit. I did not compromise one bit. And uh, I was a little uncomfortable. But there was a couple of ladies that said something that just went off and had a little, you know, the other yeah. type of people. And they said, well, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. But what they do. Yeah. Yes, sir. I feel like they're just in the back. They ain't no different than anybody else. They're not in the way. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. Yes, sir. So it's kind of the same thing with me. You know, just how my sister, my brother's known me my whole life. And, uh, Listen to this, 
Yeah. 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 I I like the fact that folks that would have been a Pontius Pilate, I mean he's he's trying to get the blood of Christ off his hands to this day. If there's water in hell, it's in a basin and Pontius Pilate is still trying to wash the blood of Christ off of his hands because he knew that he was a righteous man. That see that's that's so much more powerful than name calling or Phariseeism. And you let, let the Holy Spirit do his work and we be Christ like. And that's where conviction comes in. My my prayer is, oh God, I mean I went away from there. I was I was broken. I went away from that meeting. Kendall and I got in the car and I just told him, I said, that that that, that guy's on his way to hell and I, I don't even mean him any disrespect by calling him a guy whatever man I do whatever you want to call yourself I guess just don't come and try to use our ladies bathroom at the church but uh, uh, you call yourself whatever you want to call it's not my business but it is my business to be Christ like I wish somewhere in the New Testament we saw where how in the, in the Gospels where Jesus dealt with a homosexual I wish we could I wish it was in there yes sir some reason I'm picturing I think it might be the guy that he walked by on the street corner a lot and he shared the gospel out there one morning. Really? Yeah. I don't know, we say hi to him and smile and stuff. Yeah. And like he smiles back. Yeah. Like, you know, and I, I just feel bad for him. Like yeah. you know, his eyes are blind to the truth, but you mm -hmm. never know one day we might be able to reach him just but yeah, we got to show love in the message that we're preaching right. and not right. hate towards him. You know? Right. Without compromise. Without compromise. No, it's not okay. You want to put me in a corner and make me answer yes or no? I'm going to tell you it's not right. It's an abomination to God, and God's not happy with you. Yep. Okay? If I have to say that, I'm going to say that. But that doesn't need to be my opening statement. You know? Uh, that doesn't need to be my opening statement. And uh, I believe that the impact that Jesus had on the individuals here was, was overwhelming. Overwhelming. And that's who we're supposed to be like. That's that's what we're supposed to be like. Yes, ma'am. I was just thinking we really need to take a stand for our so-called Christian community because we had a conversation with a young man that I think is living in another man. And um, he was saying that, you know, why isn't God with me this way? Mm -hmm. So Mike talked to him for a while. And um, so we came back home. We didn't tell his family. We came back home. And uh, we called some other people. We didn't have to worry about him more. He, he found his church. He went to church. And the preacher there showed him in the Bible that he was okay. The church so mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Now when there's but but I'm saying you got so many kids that there's people mm -hmm. that believe that it's okay if God made them that way because there are preachers showing them some I don't know where. I think yeah. he told us where. Teaching them to themselves too soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll, finally what they want to hear Absolutely. and really grab the hold of it. And then they think they're not supposed to teach them. Yeah. 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 So it's just it's really sad. Right. Well, see, that's where where I'm where I'm saying, you can have a good demeanor, and you can, if if somebody's going to push me, I'm well, I'm sure I will tell you what the Bible says. Okay. But I and we have to we have to stand there. We have to stand on that, and uh, it's going to get harder and harder. Because that's where the persecution is going to come from, folks. That is where the persecution is going to It's in Canada right now. It's in Canada right now where they're shutting down churches and imprisoning pastors for preaching, openly preaching uh, against uh, homosexuals. That's not the only prison they're in trouble. They're trying to get things out of the Bible. Yeah. So, you know, we, 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 have, we have this window of opportunity to show that we can be Christ-like. And that's what we need to do. In an uncompromising, Jesus did not compromise one bit. He did not compromise one bit. Um, so, you know, we have these that were in many ways professed enemies or positioned themselves as enemies of Christ. And yet, 
they declared him to be holy, to be righteous, to be pure, to be without sin. Uh, yeah, I believe it. I, I believe it. It's a, it was a distressing thing to Pilate. It was a problem. He had a problem. You know, and obviously Judas Iscariot had himself a problem because he went out and killed himself. Uh, going on there we go um, whoop it's eight o'clock okay um, we're going to look at these other two uh, and uh, this is see Jesus was holy uh, be ye holy for I am holy is a statement that's made multiple times in scripture in the Old Testament at least twice in the Old Testament uh, God made the statement be ye holy for I am holy and now we see that Jesus is holy. And by inference, what that's telling us is that Jesus is God. Okay, that's like a secondary application. All right, Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd help us to, uh, to live what we're, what we're learning. Help us to have your spirit. Lord, help us to learn how to um, love people but not compromise. Uh, uh, on the street corner or in the pulpit or in a Sunday school class or at work. Lord, help us not to shy away.